Hey guys, it's TechRan here, and today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys the best recording settings and streaming settings with OBS Studio. So let's just jump right into it. So we're just gonna go on our settings, and from settings, we're gonna go to our output. But before we do anything, make sure you're always on advanced mode for output. So that way you can actually have full flexibility with the actual software. And then you wanna go into recording, and what you want to set this to, depending on the GPU you actually have, you want to make sure you use your GPU encoder. If you do have only a CPU encoder, you want to use X264, and that will limit what you can do with this software, but recommend using your GPU encoder. So for me, I have an NVIDIA GPU, so I'm going to click in the NVENC H264, and by enabling that, we can actually modify whatever our setting is. Now, I would recommend keeping your recording settings on MKV, so that way you have multi-audio track enabled, so that way you can like, set up multiple audio files. So let's say you would have your track one is just your mic, track two just as your gameplay, and then you can say track five as for gameplay and mic all together, and that way it goes to Twitch. You can set that up like that if you want to. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it as is if you want default. Now, primarily for me, I just have all these checked, and if you really want to get flexible with it, I will have a full and depth guide on how to customize your audio track, because if I try to explain that all here today, it's going to get really long really fast. So I will have that video linked down below. So what you want to do for your encoder settings is make sure your control rate is set from constant bit rate to constant QCP or QCP, which allows it to set the lower the level, which mine is set to 20, you can make the 16. You can actually get higher quality footage, lower the number. But the only thing you got to keep in mind too, there is a bit of diminishing returns once you go past 18. So I would recommend doing 18 if you can, 20 is best and you can do 21. I particularly use 20, and that way I get really high quality footage when I record Apex Legends. But of course, this gets pretty big, pretty fast. So if you don't have a lot of storage, I don't recommend this. But if you have the storage for this, this is what I would recommend. Now, for keyframe interval, I would set this to zero. And the only time you should change this, if you're recording uh, FPS shooters, you wanna get the smoothness to the footage, set this to three. And if you don't, leave it as zero. Preset, make sure that's on good quality and slow. And then for tuning, you want to just leave this on high quality. And for multi pass, just leave it a quarter resolution. You can do full resolution if you want to, but I find there's no point in doing that that much. You just a bit of diminishing returns and then profile and high. Now you can enable look ahead and dapped, uh, but you don't need to enable these. I just always do it. And then set your B frames from two to three if you are doing FPS shooters. So your keyframe should be three if you're doing FPS shooters on top of your B frame. If not, leave this as two or leave it as three. I particularly use uh, three and three when I'm doing FPS shooters and when I'm doing like movie reactions slash anime reactions and recording just the movie or film, I set this as zero. And then for your video settings for this one, I would recommend setting your base canvas to whatever your uh, monitor is. So if you have a 4K monitor, make sure this is 4K, which of course have the display in here. Settings right quick so you guys can just type this on up because you can't select it. Like for me, I can't select it because I have a 1080p monitor and you just set it to that. But since I have a 1080p monitor, I set my base canvas to my actual resolution of my monitor. And then your output, you just set this to actually the match it. So I'm gonna set this 1080p. And you wanna set the 4K, you can do that, or you can set it to 1080. Depends on like what you're doing with it. With streaming, it's gonna get a little bit weird, and I'll explain later here. I'm not gonna get too much into that. And then set your FPS to 60 if you want to, unless you're doing something that requires 2430. Now, if you're not able to use these settings, the second best thing you need to do is actually use from uh, QCP to variable bit rate. And what it's gonna do is you're gonna set the lowest bit rate and highest bit rate. So right now I have it set to 10,000 up to 25,000 kilobits. And the reason why it's doing that is because let's say there's a point in your video that has uh, not much going on. It's gonna use the lowest bit rate possible without compromising for the quality. So let's just say that one instance, you'll need like 12,000 bit rate, it'll do 12,000 bit rate for that frame. Maybe for the next frame over, there's a lot going on and he's 25,000, you can set it to that. So variable bit rate allows it to maintain a level of quality, but also uh, size to the actual footage. So keep in mind, this is what I recommend if you're able to, and then you can just set the keyframes to zero or three, depending what you're doing. And then preset, same rule apply, just leave it as is. Tuning, leave it as is. And multi-pass, leave it as is. And then for profile, leave it as is. And then of course your B frames, depending on what you wanna do, you can set this to three or two, ultimately up to you what you wanna do. Now, if you're not able to do this, I would recommend you the third option for recording. And this is like the third best thing you can do. It's not the craziest thing. You're not going to get the same crispness, but you of course can switch this to constant bitrate. And you can set this from 6,000 if you're just doing coding and stuff. You want to record your coding uh, to even 12,000 if you are recording some footage, but you want to also have some crispness to it. 
but if you want to like get the really nice stuff you got to get to do 16. and this is the part where i'd say if you are going to 16 just use variable bitrate you're better off using variable or even qcp if you're able to now let's go over the best streaming settings you can stream to any platform especially twitch an important thing to keep in mind this will get kind of complex but i got you guys don't worry i'll make it easy so what we want to do for recording settings for encoder is make sure it's always set on uh, cbr which is constant bitrate and for the best recording settings make sure it's 6000 and your keyframe interval will always be set to zero for streaming anywhere preset set to good quality tuning high quality multi-pass quarter and then profile high and then if you are doing fps shooters look ahead and also second turning on if you're not you can uncheck these but you can leave them as is if you want and make sure your b frames are set to two and of course make sure your video settings are set your base canvas to whatever your monitor is and to streaming to twitch make sure it's always 1080p because they do not support 4k or anything above that unless you are a twitch affiliate or i'm with a partner a partner at that point has a contract and in their contract they can specify if they want 4k streaming settings but if you're not a partner leave this as 1080p if you're an affiliate 1080p pretty much is the best thing you do for streaming in Twitch. And then set your FPS to 60. So let's go over the second best stream settings to stream to any platform. And this is especially the case for streaming to Twitch. If you're not a partner on Twitch or Twitch affiliate, I would recommend you copy these settings because you'll get some really high quality stream footage and you will definitely appreciate it. So the first thing you wanna do is go to rescale output and enable this. What you wanna do is set this to 16 samples. And if you have a strong enough PC, set this to 32 samples because what this is doing is taking your 1080p footage and turning it into 720p footage. But what this also means that since 1080p is a higher quality file than 720, you're going to notice some differences in that 1080p stream. So I would recommend this, set this to 36, and if you can't, 16. And once you want to do that, toggle this setting from 1920 by 1080 to actually uh, 720p. And of course, I don't know why the zero is missing right there. Bugged, I guess. And now for your encoder settings, I would recommend switching this from 6,000 to 4,500. And of course, keyframes is set to zero. You can enable slow, actually high quality, quarter resolution, and profile high. And then you know the norm. If you're using FPS shooter, look ahead and also psycho turning on. And then keyframes set to, uh, not keyframes, B frames set to two. But those are the best recording and streaming settings for OBS Studio. If you guys did find this video interesting or even helpful, make sure to smash like button and get subscribed to some of this on Future Tech content. I'll see you for another one. Tech Grant out.